If you've wanted to add variety to your pen and ink botanicals, in this video, I share my step-by-step -step process for creating a line drawing of an orchid. As an artist, at any level, it's beneficial to have a problem-solving process. It's especially worthwhile as a beginner because that process can be applied anytime you want to draw something new or complicated, like a complex flower. For the tutorial, we'll be using this royalty-free image from Pixabay as our reference. You're encouraged to draw Along with me, be sure to download your complimentary PDF. It has photo examples, templates, additional resources, including the full list of supplies, and even a blue line you can print out to ink over. It's on my blog. No need to provide an email. Click the button to grab it instantly. Links in the description below. With a pencil in your sketchbook, the first step is to rough sketch a couple of thumbnail doodles. This will give us options to assess the best composition for our subject. In proportion on the picture plane. My first thumbnail looks fine. However, by sketching it a second time, I now have a point of comparison. The benefit of doing this step is that it shows me concretely that the placement of the second flower in the background is potentially distracting to the viewer. I eliminate that problem by removing it entirely. We solve the composition by framing it with a border. By problem solving at a low commitment stage of our project, we've saved a bunch of time and improved our chances for better outcome at a later stage. Next is to study our subject. Focus on what's difficult about drawing this orchid. Would you agree that the center part of the flower protruding towards the viewer seems like the most challenging? We can tackle that problem by reviewing the art fundamentals. Shape and form are likely the most important fundamentals to capture correctly for this subject to look believable. We therefore shift our focus from what's difficult to what is easy, and that is to construct the subject using basic shapes. With a pencil in your sketchbook, draw a circle as a guideline, divided into four parts. Then from the center, build a cylinder by joining two smaller ovals. This immediately gives the illusion of form to the flower's throat. Draw a triangular shape for the tongue in the forefront. Add two symmetrical shapes for the petals, then add the three sepals that are tucked behind. With pen and ink, lines are used to explain the three-dimensionality of a subject to the viewer. We've established the overall design of our subject, but how will we render it convincingly using just lines? We'll use a method from the great masters, which is to problem solve parts of the subject individually. We'll start by studying the petals. With closer inspection, we see the petals have a veiny pattern. The direction of the veins provide evidence of a slight undulation. At that point, we can decide to omit the intricate vein texture because the line work of that pattern could get overly busy. However, by having made that observation, we now have valuable information on how to render the orchid more convincingly using just lines. The answer is to angle our hatch marks in the same direction as the veiny pattern. Now for the center part of the throat and tongue. Again, use cylinder shapes to build the throat and the tongue which vaguely resembles a tiny alien. After experimenting with the direction and length of the hatch marks, I sketched the alien again from a, a different angle. The second sketch was an improvement, though now it reminds me of a tiny angel. Let's also practice one of the buds with its stem or the branch. Another thing that differentiates the great masters from the rest of us is the quality of their mark making lines. This is even more observable with a medium like pen and ink. A line quality warm up would therefore be helpful for us prior to the execution of our final project. For materials, I'm using fine liner pens. Aim to use the same size nib throughout this exercise such as an 05 or an 08. I like Tombow's water based pens because the tip is softer than competing brands, but whatever brand of pen sets you have will work. Use a template in the provided PDF, or you can quickly pencil some boxes in your sketchbook as a template for this exercise. In the first box, with your fineliner pen, 
draw equally spaced parallel horizontal lines using even pressure. In the second box, we vary the pressure to achieve thick to thin lines. In the third box, we repeat the process, reversing the pressure from thin to thick. In the following row, for the first box, create a value scale using even pressure on the nib. We achieve the gradation by incrementally reducing the space between the lines. In the second column box, repeat the gradation except we vary the pressure to achieve thick to thin lines. Then in the third box, repeat but thin to thick. This is a great exercise to practice line quality and the command of our instruments. Clearly, my hand has better control going from thick to thin. What about you? Did you notice more natural aptitude for one pressure direction versus the other? Now for the tricky part. Follow the same principle as before, except with curved lines. Practice all three line styles on a curve, as well as with full circles. Even pressure, then thick to thin, and thin to thick, three times each. I found that the weight variety was less obvious to achieve in the curved line and even more subtle of an effect with circles. This tells me there's room to improve and a valuable exercise to practice on a regular basis. Let's apply what we practice to our final project. Choose a paper suitable for pen and ink. Today I'm using my Moleskine Art Collection sketchbook and a 2mm mechanical pencil with an H lead to do the underdrawing. Estimate dimensions and proportions by referring to both the photo reference and your initial thumbnails. Roughly mark the positioning of the subject on your paper. Again, start with a circle as the guideline, then add the center tongue, throat, angel thingy, the same as you did before. Keep the shapes loose for the petals, aiming for symmetry. Add the branch and buds. Once you're happy with the pencil drawing, go over the main lines for emphasis, then erase the construction lines. Lightly add the hatch marks, paying particular attention to the line angles that show directionality towards the viewer and away from the orchid. For the ink application, let's first establish that the source of light comes from the upper right corner. With your 05 or 08, begin outlining the elements closest to the viewer. We can apply the line weight variations that we already practiced. Since I'm more comfortable rendering lines from thick to thin, I rotate the paper to the angle that best suits my preference. The orchid has a lot of curved lines and so the line quality exercise proves to be handy here. Use thick lines to create depth in the areas of shadow. If you're not seeing an obvious thickening effect from adding pressure on the nib, no worries. Do a second pass to add line weight once all the contours are done. I'm using the same size nib, 
throughout an 05 for both the outline and the second pass. To create an illusion of dimension, usually a good rule of thumb with pen and ink is to bold the lines on the aspects of the subject closest to the viewer and use thinner lines for the elements further in the picture plane. With line art, especially a contour drawing without a background or much texture like this one, the bolder lines also serve as holding lines or visual boundaries. Switch to a smaller nib for the hat strokes contained inside the boundaries. Use even pressure. We already know about the importance of line direction. These strokes also create tonal value. We practice value scales and on the tongue especially, which is more in shadow, is where that gradation exercise applies. Periodically glance over to the photo reference as well as your work from the exercises. Just like with the value scales practice, reduce spacing between the lines for the darker areas and use short sparse dashes in the areas of lighter value. Each exercise provided practice, leading us to the final project with more confidence in our pen and ink drawing skills. Doing preliminary thumbnails presented options for the best composition. Sketching basic shapes was a simple way to problem solve. Building a subject with construction lines was a helpful method for exploring how to draw something new or unfamiliar. And finally, practicing line quality regularly is an effective way to continually improve. Once you're satisfied with the hatch marks, Erase any remaining graphic lines and add the finishing border. And that concludes our final project. I hope that you enjoyed the step-by-step -step approach to creating a line drawing, as well as the template if you had a chance to download it. The orchid flower was a request from the community and well, let me know in the comments what other subject you'd like to see in the future for tutorials similar to this one.